Hi everyone, welcome to the Evaluating Accessibility Project uh, introduction. Um, in this project, we're going to take a look at a website and we're going to evaluate it for accessibility. So uh, it's not a super complicated project in terms of what we're trying to achieve, but certainly evaluating for accessibility is something that warrants um, you know, some special attention and, and discussion because uh, it's tricky. There's competing standards. Um, there's competing tools, uh, and you know um, most websites have some accessibility issues. So uh, you know, sort of figuring out um, what's worth mentioning and what what is kind of par for the course um, can be tricky. Uh, the basic requirements here: we're going to choose a website. We're going to choose a set of tools and standards guides that we'll use in our evaluation. So you need to decide, are we, are we talking Section 508 compliance? Do we want to talk about uh, WCAG compliance? Or do we want to talk about uh, the ARIA compliance um, for rich internet applications? Um, or do we want to talk about some combination of all three of these things? Do we have, for example, uh, do you have in mind a particular client who might be obligated to do one or more of, of these things? Um, like, for example, somebody who does government contracts, educational work, um, or other other work. Um, or possibly even work for another another country. You know, For example, European Union sites have different requirements than American sites. So there, there can be all kinds of ways that you decide what tools and standards guides you use in your evaluation. I would recommend that you use at least Section 508. Uh, Section 508 is fairly easy to wrap your head around and is um, easy to check for. But the WCAG guidelines are well defined and there's a lot of tools that help you analyze for that as well. So um, WCAG uh, level 3 is really what we should all aspire to um, to hit. And uh, and so, you know, that might be uh, worth checking out as well. Um, you're going to uh, decide about, um, you're going to use your tools and standards guys to evaluate the website for accessibility. Uh, you're going to note issues and um, consider how you'd, you'd recommend fixing them. And then of course uh, you're going to write up an evaluation document and that evaluation document is going to basically give us all the information about what you just did and your conclusions and findings and, and suggestions for improvement. So um, when it comes down to uh, to working with some of the resources that we have this week. Uh, we have a bunch of them listed, and I definitely recommend that you do the required reading and read through the, the basic um, accessibility guidelines, summaries, and so forth. Uh, we also have um, these accessibility evaluation resources, which include a whole bunch of great articles, as well as some lists of tools and some individual tools. Um, I recommend that you uh, possibly read through this selecting web accessibility evaluation tools which is linked and this um, this might help you um, figure out uh, what tools you want to use in your evaluation and you know certainly you're free to choose any combination of tools many of the tools do the same thing so there's not necessarily a great reason to kind of try to use a whole bunch of ones that do the same thing, but um, you might want one that specializes in Section 508, one that specializes in WCAG, and one that specializes in ARIA or something along those lines. Um, here's an evaluation tools list that the W3C publishes. Uh, many of these are good, and I, I don't want to make a whole lot of judgments on them, but what I do want to let you know is that any uh, checker that requires you to put in um, sort of personal contact information in order to get your results, I would frankly avoid that. Um, I don't think there's any reason why somebody needs your email address and phone number in order to tell you about what accessibility issues they found on your website and they probably are going to market to you if you give them that information. So if you do choose to give them that information in order to use that tool, keep in mind that um, you you know you might want to give them a phone number that you don't mind receiving telemarketing calls or an email address that has a good spam filter on it um, because you probably will get spammed uh, after that. Um, but there are a bunch of great tools on here, and so I certainly don't want to make you shy away from checking them out and um, and using them. Um, there's also uh, this great tool, which I saw, and I thought that I would just kind of show you this little report. Now, this is just a mobile checker tool. This is not really even talking about accessibility, but you know, you can get so much information. Like here I can find out, oh, these resources are not being compressed and they could be. And if I look at these, I realize, oh, these are third party services that I'm using, you know? Um, I have a whole bunch of redirects here that it's complaining about. And if I look here, I realize, oh, that's all because of a single 
ad tracking statistic uh, tool that I put on the site uh, just last week to track a new ad campaign. So, um, so there's there's things that we can figure out, you know, through all these different tools, and um, and it can they can help us, you know, understand accessibility and usability quite well. And not all of these are tools that you would use necessarily through your web browser. So certainly um, keep in mind all the different things that you can use and all the different ways that you can use them. And you will be able to get into all kinds of great um, analysis around accessibility and uh, come up with some good suggestions to improve the sites that, that you choose to look at. So uh, have fun with the assignment and good luck evaluating for accessibility.